now I'm going to do the prone instability versus anterior shear. One I don't do in the clinic and one I do in the clinic. So one of the, the clusters when we have somebody who, who can't maintain their neutral zone or is hypermobile, the, an indicator that your program is going to work, at least according to the research, is the prone instability test. Typically you just have the patient lay over the table. You do a PA pressure. Ow, that hurts. You have them lift their legs and you do it, oh, that doesn't hurt. That means that your program is going to work according to the research. Limiting factors, not a lot of patients try doing this on your 65 year old with an instability. It's not that comfortable, but the research, that's what the research has. We have an alternative test that might be equally effective and that's with the patient lying on their side and it's looking at anterior shear. We're getting our finger in the interspinous space. I'm pushing through the femur to push the bottom segment backwards, which is a relative anterior shear of the segment you're testing. We're going to be in a couple positions. We're going to be around 60 degrees, 90 degrees and full flexion. Looking one, as a provocation test to see if I can reproduce symptoms. And then number two, can I turn the, the, the symptoms off? Either through position of the legs, looking for increased flexion, decreasing the pain, or number two, asking them to bring in their core or activate their core to see if that is going to decrease the pain. So, as opposed to the prone instability test, this can be done on every patient. We have them set up in the same position we do for our pivums, but what we found is that when we did our extension pivum, at that area where there was creasing, there was also pain, especially when we did a little overpressure. So then what I'll do, if I felt it was L4-5, I'm going to bring my fingers to, these fingers are going to fix L4, then my index finger is going into the interspinous space. Then I have the knee set up, so this part of my hip is going to create a pressure going up. You can use your hand if you want to push up, but I like to just get into this position here I'll get the knees a little bit more flexed, so somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees, and I'll do a shear. So it's not that much. Remember, these stress tests, don't ha you don't have to bring your A game. You're just trying to focus the energy at that segment. If the patient said, oh, that increased my pain, that's exactly what I'm coming in to see you for, that's exactly what I felt when I was standing and bending backwards, you change the knee position. Knowing if I get them to 90 degrees, I'm bringing in that posterior ligamentous system. So if they have a functional posterior ligamentous system, when I redo that same test where I'm doing that anterior shear, they might say, oh, that feels better. That's a sign that using lumbar flexion should be part of their strategy for maintaining it, getting them in their neutral zone and not irritating the area. If that doesn't work, you bring them up a little bit further and redo the test. Typically somewhere, along that arc, they're going to have decreased pain. Number two, that brings in the posterior ligamentous system. What about the neuromuscular system? You can bring them into this same position and just say, hey, can you tighten your butt muscles for me? Like you're trying to stop yourself from going to the bathroom. And then you do the same thing. So muscles are relaxed, you do it the patient is feeling pain. Then you have them do simulated deep core 
and you do that same thing and it decreases their pain. That simulates what the prone instability test is doing. That would be a sign of a neuromuscular program working for the patient. And you can do it at any point along the range as well. But this is sideline instead of prone. It addresses lumbar spine position and neuromuscular activation to maintain the neutral zone in a better way. So it's, a, I think, a more logical way to do it. But what happens is when we do this, if we focus on feeling three or four millimeters of motion, people will bail on the test because they're, they're like, oh, I can't feel that. You know, and, or the research says that therapists can't even palpate L5. How can they feel three or four millimeters worth of motion? And Bill Temis did some ultrasound study that got published in JOSBT that, that, that validated some, some of this test, but not on a wide enough scale to make it publishable, et cetera. But if you see how researchers have to make like one variable, PA pressure, lift the legs, PA pressure, that's an easy one to validate. So then we can take that and say, okay, I'm essentially doing a PA pressure here. I'm just focusing it a little bit more. I can bring the muscles in. What they're doing is just bringing everything in. What I'm trying to do is just get the patient to try to bring in some of the deep core. So it's along, along the same lines. So that's the prone instability test versus anterior shear.